When you cut services and social investments that impact the most vulnerable people, the most vulnerable children and youth, the most vulnerable seniors, when you push people into crisis and despair, you can be sure that you will in fact increase costs for all of us in health care, in education, in the justice system, and in lost potential and productivity often over a lifetime. We've come together in this coalition now to tell Premier Campbell and his government that we want the punishment of poor children and families in B to stop now. We want the punishment of single mothers to stop now. We want the erosion of all of our services to stop now. We want government to stop increasing inequality in this province through cuts to services, rising fees, and tax policies that get more, give more to the wealthy than to the poor. Something is seriously wrong with government priorities when they can spend billions of dollars on the Olympics, but school boards are forced to lay off teachers and close schools when they can spend enormous sums of tax revenue on convention centers but can't find the money for children's playgrounds, youth addiction services, or environmental protection and stewardship. <laughs> British Columbians here today and all across this province want a healthier society for us all. We want to protect and preserve our natural environment for future generations. We value a vibrant cultural and artistic life that everyone can participate in and enjoy. We value social justice for first peoples, for differently abled peoples, for newcomers, for everyone. This is the vision we hold for the society we want to raise our children in and we want to grow old in. We can move towards this vision instead of away from it. By coming together in support of these values today and in the future, we can step off this divisive, selfish, and destructive path that has been promoted, where it's every individual for his or herself, and too many are left behind. We can afford the more inclusive and compassionate society we want. It is our job to work together to find and lead the way. Let's do it for ourselves. Let's do it for our children. Thank you very much. In the words of uh, the great uh, Irish Union organizer Jim Larkin, the great appear great because we are on our knees. Rise up. I was born one morning. The rain are pouring down. I heard my mammy say to my pappy, my best calling John Henry Brown. Walk on, boy. from the group Seniors on Guard for Medicare. Many of these folks remember the days before public health care. Art? <laughs> Members of the Coalition to Build a Better Rich Columbia, we are gathered here to protect and enhance civil society. A society that believes the weakest should have the same opportunity as the strongest when it comes to education, health care, housing, and culture. However, what we have seen is a perversion of that ideal by the Liberal Provincial Government, which governs on the assumptions that the poor have too much and the rich not enough. We have seen massive tax cuts which favored corporations and the rich and lower middle income earned and loaded the load onto lower and middle income earners. 
These tax cuts have led to service cuts and at times of economic downturn to major deficits. Seniors Seniors organizations have warned both the provincial and federal governments against these tax cuts and tax shifts favoring the corporation and the rich because it would lead to greater poverty, unemployment and mounting service cuts. So what is the response of the government? The harmonized sales tax, a tax which will shift another $1.9 million each year from corporations to individual taxpayers. Our seniors will have to pay an additional $800 per year in taxes. The Minister of Finance tells us that he doesn't have any other choice, that he needs the money for Medicare. I want to tell the Minister that he has another choice. He can rescind the tax cut of the 25% tax cuts to people who make over $100,000 a year. He can rescind rescind the tax cuts to corporations, including the $120 million he gave to the banks. We will have enough money not only to reinstate the program cuts, but we'll have enough money to deal with the deficits and possibly have some left over to bring in a universal home care and home support program for seniors and the disabled. But we know that this provincial government won't do it. What we need is a government that is willing to do the right thing. This government has lost the moral authority to govern. Therefore, seniors are supporting the referendum, the referendum on the HST and subsequent recall campaigns in sufficient writings to bring about the defeat of the Campbell government. These seniors are participating actively in a petition campaign. To us, it's not a campaign against taxes, but a campaign for tax fairness, honesty in government, and the protection and enhancement of civil society. Let us carry on the fight, and we shall, we shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday, oh deep in my heart I do gentlemen, beautifully put, Art. Wow, what a fantastic job. Art Cuby. Our next speaker is Fazila Jiwa from the Vancouver Rape Relief and Women's Shelter. For over 30 years, they have operated a rape crisis line and a transition house for battered women. Fazila Jiwa, please welcome her. The provincial government service cuts affect the most oppressed, the most disadvantaged, and the most vulnerable people in BC. Among these underprivileged groups are women, especially Aboriginal women who continue to suffer from the damaging effects of colonialism. Our government claims to be democratic, but democracy cannot exist under conditions of inequality. The provincial government's cuts to funding for community groups, services and programs are antithetical to the government's responsibility for democracy because they disable the most oppressed in our society from being able to create, participate in, and share in the bounty of the community that we want. 